We just got some new miniatures we've been super excited about. So this week I'm going to show you every step I take with gap filling, cutting, cleaning, trimming before I start painting any of my miniatures. <music> This video is sponsored by the subscribe button. It's the worst paying sponsor, but if you click it, I get one more. <laughs> hey everyone, it's been a busy year, this last year. Not just for me, but, but also for Victor and Lucas, who, who helps me every week with the editing and filming and everything. And, and especially the last week, it's been crazy. Cause Lucas is home with a fever and Victor had a kid with a runny nose. So he's been home taking care of the kid and working evenings just to make sure that we have videos every week. And it's come to a point where this week, obviously, because Lucas isn't here, we have to push the Fiverr video. And we've all kind of been on the verge of a burnout. So I don't want to push that too hard. So this week, I kind of just wanted to chill back a bit, take it easy. And instead of doing this epic, huge builds, I thought I'd share with you how I prepare my armies. And as a coincidence, I got one of these from Games Workshop, which is funny because I pre-ordered one for myself for the orcs anyway, because I want to build the orcs for this. And I know Victor had been really excited about getting into this box as well. So I thought I'd surprise him, remove him from the editing desk by the computer and just take a full day to just build minis and chill and talk. Maybe put on a TV series in the background while we build these. And I'll teach you exactly the step by step how I prepare my armies and what I do with them. But first, let's go let him know that we got this and that we can take a chill day today. I think he deserves it. Hey Victor, what you doing? Just working on next week's video. You wanna take a break? Just chill? Build some minis? Watch I some TV series? Can think of worse. You can think yes, of worse. Please. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, it's time to finally get into this box. But... Before I properly start working on any of my armies, I decide how I want to have the bases. Because I always make elaborate bases, or at least bases that tell a story. Because if I don't have a plan, it's gonna make life a lot more difficult after the painting. So even if I build the miniatures, I always make sure to have a plan and test build the base to make sure that it looks good. So for the Cruel Boys, I want to make epic swamp bases that matches the theme of the army. And for that, we need some recessed bases, we need some cork bark, we need some roots and some cool grass tufts. And to top that off, we're going to use some crystal clear resin and pour that to make it look exactly like a swamp. And that's where the 3D printer comes in. Instead of making our own recessed bases, we're gonna 3D print some. A patron of mine called Andy 3D sculpted these recessed bases for me. So I don't manually have to do 80 of these, I can actually just print them out. And with recessed bases, I should be able to make a really, really cool swamp like they're coming out of the swamps. It's gonna be really cool. And you guys, you have no idea how thankful I am to have viewers like Andy and everyone else who's a patron or just you guys commenting helping out making these videos. Without you guys, they would not be what they are. So I put Andy's Instagram link in the comment section down below. You can go there, just give him some love on some photos, give him a subscription or whatever, just show him some love. Because God knows we need some more positivity in this world. Let's go build some minis. So the bases are printing and we're gonna start building the miniatures. Victor have already started. It's a fairly simple process. But here's a few tips to make your life easier. I start off by cutting the miniatures with a good set of clippers. These are from Redgrass Games, and honestly I never thought a good clipper could make a big difference, but once I got this one with a good flat side that's super sharp, it's going to cut through the spruce like butter. And I'm sure there's 100 other brands that make these high quality cutters, but if you got 30 euros to spare, I'd say it's definitely worth the extra money. If not, don't worry, use a cheap one or whatever you have at home. But with this one, sometimes I barely have to clean up afterwards. But with the cheaper ones, I end up with stress marks and things that I have to clean up a lot afterwards. Once I've cut the parts from the spruce, I use a sharp knife to scrape off the mold or any flash that's left over parts from the cutting. If there's any part that's difficult to scrape off or that I accidentally scrape off too much, I can use a nail file sponge with super fine grit to even out the surface. 
This has become one of the most satisfying parts of my building process. It leaves no trace of flash or anything like that behind. Whenever I build a horde army or I do something that I need to be done with fast, I'm not nearly as meticulous as I am now. But I've been really excited about this army, so I'm gonna do it very carefully. Before we start adding any glue, try to dry fit all of the parts just to make sure it's a good fit or if I have to actually do some extra cutting or trimming to make them fit perfectly. I really do prefer plastic glue over super glue these days. It melts down the plastic a little bit on each side to create a super strong bond and the best thing is it tends to make the gaps between the different parts even smaller than with say super glue. I tried a different few, Army Painter, Games Workshop, etc, but I 100% due to the packaging design preferred the Games Workshop one. The long nose just makes the flow of the glue super controllable. Once all of the miniatures are glued together, I'm gonna start working on the rest of the bases. If you want to have any tips on basing materials, I've done a full video on that that you can follow in the top right corner. But for this one, it's fairly simple. We're using cork bark, old dry roots, and a texture paint. Once the miniatures are painted and the bases are painted, we're going to add a lot more details. Like grass tufts, moss, to really make it feel like a swamp. I want to have some good variety on the bases. I want to make some feel like they're coming out of the base and some feel like they're coming out of the water. Some of them are climbing up some roots to get a good variety in there. We don't want all of them to look exactly the same. Also, by the way, guys, Liam Sanity, the awesome illustrator, just made a brand new Squidmar t-shirt. I put that up with all of the other awesome t-shirts that we have, so if you want to support this channel, you can go check out our epic t-shirts. We probably have the coolest nerdware on the internet. If you use the code VILLAINBOYS, you get 10% off your entire purchase. The code will be valid for 14 days, so if you want to pick up any of the t-shirts, make sure to do it now. Once the bases are done, we're going to glue the minis in place. This is where we bring out the super glue, because plastic glue won't bond to the bases that we built. If there's any miniature that still have visible gaps from the gluing, we're going to use Milliput. This is a trick that I learned from Marco Frisoni. I use a bit of Milliput and put it in ISO. This sort of creates a Milliput juice that we can use to add with a brush to fill in the gaps. This goes super fast and even though it's not perfect, it's going to be definitely enough for our army and if we want to remove some, we can do it with the sanding once it's dried. And with that, our miniatures are prepared to be primed. I have an airbrush with a primer, but when I do a lot of minis, I definitely prefer using the spray can. It's just a lot faster and more enjoyable. We need to shake it vigorously before though. I do have a lot of graffiti spray cans and army painter primers that I use for different things. But if I'm just priming something black, Citadel primer is my absolute favorite because it comes out super thin. And when I spray on the miniatures, I spray in bursts in a moving motion so we don't spray too much in a specific area. As a final preparation step, I do a zenithal highlight on the primed minis with inks through an airbrush. This helps bring out the volumes and it helps me see what all of the parts are and how they look. If I'm using inks or thin down paints or even contrast paints, it definitely helps me with a good underpainting for the volumes, so you can take advantage of the light that we painted in with the airbrush and save us a lot of time. If you don't have an airbrush and inks, don't worry, you can use a grey or a white spray can primer and just do the same thing with the primer from above. And with that, all of the miniatures are prepared and ready to be painted. I started painting them already and done the first base colors on all of my bases. Painting all of the miniatures is probably gonna take me a few weeks, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun because I'm super excited about it. And then I just gotta do the finishing steps on the basing and do the resin pour. These are the steps that I take to prepare my armies. I hope you learned something from it. 
It was nice to take a few days to chill a bit more than to stress with a super advanced video or painting up an entire army for a video. And I hope you enjoy the more chilled vibe in this one. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either follow the links in the video description and pick up any of the tools that I use when I paint miniatures from Amazon. That way they kick a bit of money back to this channel or you can become a patron and pledge a few dollars every month. That is the thing that helps pay my salary every month. So I really appreciate it if you like to do that. And with that said, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.